thank you all for being here tonight. It's delightful for me to be able to come down and visit Helena. Um, I actually was in Butte earlier today, and so Helena was sort of on the way. Um, first of all, I want to talk to you that my mom always said, you know, you, you, every day you can learn something new. And today I learned, do not put the clicker in your pocket while you're waiting to talk, because your slides will advance. <laughs> so tonight's topic is housing. Why is it such a problem for so many people? You know, I could answer that in two sentences, but I want to give you some detail. But here's the two-sentence summation. It's too expensive, and there's not enough of it. And that's why housing is a problem for so many people. And I know many of you in the room are probably dealing with these kinds of things every day, either personally or through your clients or perhaps your family or your customers, so you see this. So let's talk a little bit about what the details are. I wanted to start out by thinking, having you with me think about what's so important about having a home. And oftentimes the way I look at it is I just say to myself, home is, and what's the end of that sentence? So think about that for yourself. Home is. What's it to you? You know, we could say lots of things. We could say, home's Montana. I could say, home is Great Falls. Home is, is my neighborhood on the lower north side. Home is my house that I live in. But home is so much more when we look at how we're emotionally and psychologically invested in our homes. So a little bit about my story. I have 11 brothers and sisters. Um, grew up in, in Great Falls. In 1950, my folks bought a house, and they paid cash for that house. How did they do that? Well, my grandmother had a little plot of land in Anaconda, and it had a little barn on it, and she gave it to my folks, and my folks made the barn a house, and they sold that house after a while, had some equity, bought another house, had some equity. They moved to Great Falls. They could pay cash for a house. Personally, my own home, I've been a homeowner since I was about 28 years old, rented a house for two years, single mom, three kids, said to my landlord one day, you know, if you ever want to sell this house, I'd really like to buy it. And he said, oh, I got a terrible tax year. I can't take anything down. Gave me a contract for deed with nothing down. What a gift that was, right? But this is why I'm so compelled to talk about housing all the time because I had the benefit of some lucky, lucky breaks, and I just feel so much that everyone needs to have that stability of a good home. So let's go on a little bit here. All right, no, wait. <laughs> well, let's try to go on a little bit here. What's going on? Okay, so these are all the ways that home matters. Home matters for education, children in a stable home, Every, every study shows that they do better, better educationally. If an entire classroom has a lot of kids that are home unstable or food insecure, you'll see that that classroom doesn't do as well. So having a home, a stable home, either a rental or a home ownership, just kind of levels the playing field for kids. <laughs> you know, I practiced this. You did. You I did. So good yeah. So, Penny, why don't you just advance my slides for me, because maybe they're not going to work. Oh, wait, it works in this hand. Let's try this hand. <laughs> so, home matters for our individual success. And you can see the facts here. You know, it gives us space to recharge our minds and our bodies for the school day and the work. And without a home, it's really difficult to cope. If you don't know where you're going at night or you're, that home is unstable, then it's just really hard to cope. And when you think about Maslow's hierarchy, Right, the basic need, food, shelter, shelter. So that's why home is so important. Home's important for public safety. You know, again, all the research shows that if people have stable homes, they're more engaged in their community, they know their neighbors better. All of that makes for a safer neighborhood and a safer community. And when you have all of the individuals, or many of the individuals, having that kind of safety and security, the entire city will be more safe. Home really matters for the economy, and again, this is related to that hierarchy of needs. If we're well housed, if we have something that we can afford, then we have more money to spend on all of the other pieces that we need. That helps the economy. But we also say in my business that home is where jobs go to sleep at night. What does that mean? Well, if you're an employer and you want to hire somebody new from out of town, if they can't find a house, they can't take your job because you need a home for that job to go and sleep at night. So 
it's really important for the economy and the workforce to be able to have enough homes that are affordable. So I want to invite you to join the movement of Home Matters. You can see at the bottom there, homemattersinamerica.com, some great videos that link home to all of the other things that we've talked about tonight. Now I'm going to move to a new subject, and that's it's like, why don't we have enough homes, and why aren't, there, why aren't they appropriately affordable? And it's because there's such a lack of funding to create homes that are affordable to working families, to seniors, to individuals with disabilities, all of that. There's just such a huge lack throughout the nation, but in particular in Montana. So here's one way that we fund housing in Montana. It's called the tax credits. And so the, the state, uh, the federal government allocates $25 million worth of tax credits to Montana each year. I'm on the Board of Housing. The Board of Housing looks at all of the applications. This year we had 19 really good applications from all over Amer uh, Montana. They were large, they were small, they were so needed, and we had enough money to fund seven. So 12 communities walked out of that room saying, they didn't fund us. We are desperate for this housing. So this is one source of, of uh, housing or money for housing that's affordable in Montana. So here's another source, and that's uh, Community Development Block Grant and Home Monies. These are federal dollars. State's very good about figuring out how to get those allocated in the communities. Missoula, Great Falls, and Billings, they have their own allocations, and then the rest goes through the state for the, what we call the balance of state. But here's a key point. If I can have you walk away with one thing tonight, it's going to be that there is no funding for housing in Montana that comes from the state. In 46 other states, the state and local communities fund housing, but that does not occur in Montana, with few, few exceptions. So I'm arguing all the time for what I call a coherent housing policy for Montana. And now I'm going to talk about what our incoherent housing policy, I wouldn't even call it a policy, I'd just call it our housing default. So in the United States, you can deduct your mortgage interest on your income tax, right? Up to a million one hundred thousand dollars worth of mortgage, you can deduct those 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 uh, interest that interest if you itemize. Well, it turns out that forty-five percent of the mortgages that are over five hundred thousand are in ten hotspots in America. So we're really using federal tax dollars through the income tax deductions to fund huge mortgages in 10 places. If you lowered that cap to a half a million dollars, we went from a million one to a half a million, you would gain $95 billion over 10 years. You know, you could build a lot of housing with $95 billion. And for those who say, oh, well, wait, you know, people already bought their house, they're counting on that income tax deduction, well, we'll just phase it in over time so it doesn't shock anybody. So let's look at Montana. Montana's interest tax mortgage interest tax deduction, the top 10% of income tax filers get 35% of the benefit. So 35% of this benefit, which is dollars that come out of the state treasury in the form of a deduction, go to, 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 uh, to subsidize the top 10% of earners. If we just look at the top 3%, they get 14% of the benefit. $8 million a year comes out of the state treasury to go for the mortgage interest tax deduction to support the top 3% of wage earners in, in, in Montana. In, in the years from 2012 to 2014, as you can see from the slide, there was seven, 578 mortgages over $500,000. So 1% of all mortgages. So you can see that it's incoherent. We're not subsidizing the right kind of housing. So let's look at home ownership in Montana, moving to another topic now. You can see that home ownership rates are declining in Montana, and pretty dramatically during the, the recession, during the mortgage meltdown, as the people in the housing world call it. And so let's look at what the causes of that could be. First of all, wages are stagnant. We've heard this a lot, but in particular for the home buying, first time home buyer category, you can see that they're well under um, and they're, they're unchanged since 2000. And so they don't have enough money to buy a house. Increasing student debt and um, 
rental rates are going up, so they pay more for rent. They can't save for a down payment. Individuals are staying in school longer, having babies later, getting married later. Those are things that trigger home, by, home ownership. And we're urbanizing in Montana. So we have a greater mortgage, um, greater home ownership in the, in the rural areas. And as people move to the city, they might become renters. So I'm going to move to renting now and talk about how out of reach it is for so many Montanans. So having a job does not guarantee you can rent a one bedroom apartment. Not in one state in the United States does a minimum wage er worker earn enough to rent a one bedroom apartment. Not in a single state. If you want to know more about the data and they've got great state data, just go to NLIHC, National Low Income Housing Coalition, you'll find out a lot more about that. So I'm going to give you a little tutorship now in something we call area median income. This is set by HUD. It means that the median means that half of the incomes, household incomes are above it and half are below. <clears throat> so you can see here, and I'm going to emphasize that 15% of, of median income in Montana statewide, we call that deeply low income. And a one-person household, that would be about $7,700 $7, a year. For a four-person household, extremely low, would be 11000 a year. So just divide those by 12. And you can see these are extremely low-income people, probably people on Social Security, maybe on a disability income. <clears throat> but even for low-income people, at $41,000 a year, we'll see that there's a shortage of, of homes. So. This is the other side of the home ownership rate dropping is that has really put pressure on rental. And so now rentals are starting to rise. And you can see just since 2011, kind of a dramatic increase in rental rates all across Montana. And I know we've seen that particularly in, um, in the urban areas. So here's the state facts on Montana. Our minimum wage, which is actually better than the federal minimum wage, $8.05 an hour. So the average renter wage, be able to be able to, um, to rent a, an apartment, you'd have to make $10.91. And to have a two-bedroom apartment, you'd have to make almost $14 an hour on average across the state. It's different in Bozeman than it is in Helena than it is in Great Falls. But these are statewide averages. So when we look at Montana, we also see that we have 128,000 renting households, almost 32% of our population. So here's, now I'm going to move into the shortage of affordable rentals. So again, and this comes from the National Low Income Housing Coalition. In Montana, for people that are very extremely low income, that 15% rate, we need almost 11,000 more homes, apartments or, home, or single family homes. But we have a shortage of 11,000. For the people that are 30% AM, AMI, area meeting income, low income people, we need almost 18,000 more units. We only have a million people in our state and between these two facts, 25,000 people. So now I want to state those same statistics in a little bit different way. And what this slide tells us is for every 100 households in a certain income group, this is the number of rent uh, apartments that are affordable to that income group. So for every 100 people that are extremely low income, there's 25 apartments. For every 47 people, every 100 people that are, are low in, very low income, below 30%, 47 units. So half those people can't find a home that's affordable to them. And you can see below 50%. When we get below 80%, so this is 50 to 80%, there's actually 103. So it's about parity. It would be enough homes for those folks, provided they lived in the right community, I might add. So I want to speak about another issue now, and this is called cost burdening. So there's a lot of work, a lot of census data, a lot of studies that have done about, um, well, what, what should housing cost? And the, the, the uh, words we use are that housing should be about 30% of area median income. So about, uh, um, about normal, about reasonable would be that you take your income, take 30% of it, and those would be your housing costs, either your rent and your utilities or your house payment and your taxes and insurance. So 
people are cost burdened if they pay more than 30%, and they're severely cost burdened if they pay more than 50%. So of the households in Montana that are extremely low income, below 15%, you can see from the slide, 81% of, of them pay more than half their monthly income for their rent. Half their monthly income, where does that leave people for the other half, for all of the other things they need to do? If they're below 30%, 72% of them pay more than half their income, and then you can see the rest of it there. But even if you're between 30 and 50%, very low income, you can see 25% of those people are paying half their income for rent. So you can see the strain that this puts on families, and that kind of links back to our original idea of, you know, what does a stable household do for a family? So if you're in these categories and you're paying more than 50%, and every single month you struggle to make that mortgage payment, every single month you struggle to make that rent payment, you can see what that adds to the stress of a family and how it will impact their economic, educational, and public safety outcomes. So this is a slide that just shows that Montana's, um, uh, well, Montana has a housing trust fund, and I said, you know, all, all but a handful of states do. And it's true, Montana has one, but I call it Montana's housing trust unfund because there's no money in it. So you can't do anything with trust fund unless you have money in it. And we'll talk a little bit about how to get there in a few minutes. So it's time to talk about how you can get there. I'm going to put this down so I don't hurt myself. <laughs> um, I want to thank Todd for being our photographer tonight or our video, videographer tonight. And I really want to thank him because all of those mistakes I made early on and like walking out of here and putting it over there, he can edit that out of the tape. But these tapes will be available online. And I also want to thank Penny um, Cope from the Board of Housing. Todd works at the Board of Housing as well for helping me edit down. And of course, Tyler, whose great idea all of this was, really want to thank him as well. So what can you do? What can you do? A, you can start talking about the problems of housing. You know, most of us are pretty well housed. And so we don't, we don't face that every day. But every day there's people in Montana struggling struggling to stay housed, to get housed, and being able to make that rent or mortgage payment. So just the, the um, education about that piece. Secondly, you can take that education that you've learned tonight, you can in, post the video when it comes up on, on your uh, Facebook page, but we really need to be talking to legislators about this. You know, we really need to say, does Montana want to be a state that doesn't house its families and its seniors? and it's, um, it's Montanans with disabilities, do we want to be that state? Or do we want to say, you know, housing is a fundamental reason that government exists and we ought to support it. And then lastly, I want to ask for some personal um, commitment. So uh, NeighborWorks Montana, which is our statewide sister organization, I work just in Cascade County, but our statewide sister organization, has a program called an individual development account. And through that account, we help people save for their down payments. They save $1,000 and we, we're able to match it and we can, um, they can save toward a down payment. So if you want to make a personal contribution, you can know that that goes directly to an individual that's struggling to save for a down payment. So I want to close with uh, a couple, just a couple stories. And first of all, I want to talk about a, a family that we help become a homeowner. Um, actually an individual. Um, he's a line cook in Missoula. Missoula's got outrageous home prices. And he had a little bit of family help and we were able to help him with a deferred down payment. And the day he closed on his home, he called the lender in Great Falls in, at our office that helped him. And he said, today I went from poverty to middle class. Poverty to middle class because he became a homeowner. That is so, so powerful. And a corollary story to that on the rental side is uh, NeighborWorks Great Falls develops rental projects. And um, we're just working on a 12-plex of three bedrooms. Really needed in Great Falls. Families with kids um, just are struggling every day. And so um, half of these rentals will be very affordable. 
And we've had people day after day call us and say, when are your homes, when are your apartments going to be ready? I'm desperate. I really need this home. And when I see people stand at our front desk, tears dripping down their eyes and saying, I am desperate for these apartments, it makes me think every day that housing is where I belong. And I hope that all of you think that too, that we, together we can lift this state and we can create more housing, quality housing that's affordable to working families, seniors, families with disabilities, individuals with disabilities, for all of Montana to be able to say, we take care of our people. Thank you.